Welcome back. If you watched the first video creating your first simulation, you'll now be aware of how you can quickly create a process flow in Simulate, and what our core objects, start point, queue, activity, and endpoint resemble in a real-life system. Now, it's all very well being able to map out your process quickly on screen, but what brings that to life, and often is the more complex part of a system, is the data that drives the process and the control rules that determine the flow of work. This is where simulation and some tools can get very complex and time-consuming. At Simulate, we do everything we can to make this as quick and easy as possible. Let's continue with a simple four-click simulation we learned to build up from the last video. So now we have a simple flow on screen, let's see how we would start applying some input data. The clock has a wealth of properties you can amend and customize for your process. You can specify details for your working day, as well as amend the units of time and the format on screen to make tracking easy for you. There are also more options available to customize for your individual process. Let's go ahead and give the start point a name, and look at the various distributions. Simulate supplies you with a large list of distributions, making it flexible enough to mimic your exact process. In your real-life process, you may have schedules for deliveries, certain events occurring at various points in the day, or recurring appointments which need to be included in the data input. This could include raw materials arriving at the shop floor. This is quick and easy to set up from the ribbon. You can also add files into the system for work item arrivals if you have the data available. The day planner allows you to set up arrivals over the working day. This could be customers in a restaurant, calls in a call center, or patients in a hospital. You can also change the arrival interval to suit your process. Within queues, we can set a capacity, shelf life, and minimum waiting time. This might represent materials in a system or food produce with a shelf life. This allows you to add depth to your process quickly. We're going to expand and build up our simulation model. Let's add in another queue, activity, and an endpoint quickly by using the paddle. The duplication wizard means we can easily add these objects and start to build complexity into the simulation. Now we know that all processes have constraints, and these can come in a number of ways, but two of the most common are people and equipment. Most systems rely on one of the two, if not both. In Simulate, we use a resource to model this. A resource can be anything from a nurse in a hospital to a machine in a manufacturing assembly line. We can assign where each resource is used within any process. Some may be needed at several stages of your process, or they may only need to be assigned at one stage of your process. The resource matrix lets us add this information with ease. There is also an option to set requirements for your resources from the Properties tab when an activity is selected. Let's go ahead and assign some staff to each activity point in the process. The resource schedule is where you add when your resources are available. If you were modeling a process such as a call center, during busy periods you will need more people to answer calls and during quieter periods you will need less staff. There are other options available to add complexity to your resources should you need it. We can set up routing properties within our activity by navigating to the Properties tab. Routing in allows you to control how work is brought into an activity. There are various routing and disciplines you can choose from depending on your process requirements. You can also choose to set a changeover time. In manufacturing, this could be retooling the machines for different products entering the line. For example, changing from small size bottles to large size bottles. Routing out allows you to control how the activity distributes the finished work to the next stages of the process. Using labels even lets you have different behaviors for different types of work, for example, patients with different illnesses. We can collect data and KPIs from each of our objects in the simulation by navigating to the results option in the ribbon. Right-clicking on numbers when a white R appears will let you instantly add these details into your results.
you can add data charts and graphs into your simulation to easily track changes and get a high level view of how your process is performing. You will notice that the charts and graphs will dynamically update as the simulation gathers data during the run period. We can gather information on our results from the Results Manager and start to carry out some analysis. As you'll see, everything in Simulate is designed to help you build your simulations as quickly as possible without compromising on power, functionality, or flexibility. Remember, building a simulation is not the objective, and the simulation is not the output. Making the right decision is. If you would like some more information on anything we have covered, or if you would like to see the software in more detail, then get in touch and set up a demo with one of our simulation advisors.